<laughs> oh, stop it. Honestly. We're live, D. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Hopa. <laughs> it's this Sunday, isn't it? <laughs> no. I, do you have PTSD from Mother's Day? What is PTSD? Uh, Post-traumatic stress. Ah. I think I have PTSD from Mother's <laughs> Day. Why? Uh, because of all the tea boxes we made and the 8 billion charcuterie boards that we made. That was that was fun fun uh, fun to watch you do all that. <laughs> I actually had it really good at Mother's Day. I just acted like I was busy in the kitchen so that I don't get picked on. I'm like, hey, could you do crackers? I'm like, oh. no, no, I'm too busy. Anyhow, you just you just do very fast neck moves and just look move around and just hyperventilate. And then that people leave you alone. <laughs> and if you don't want to do a job, mess it up, awesome the first time. Like just just destroy it. They'll never ask you again. Is that your... Uh... Pro tip for the day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It's 5.30. It's Thursday night. I'm dying here. I was done. That's so funny because that's exactly what he did <laughs> on the weekend. I've been around, you know. <laughs> oh, my God. He's like, I'm busy. I'm busy. His I'm hair's not, on fire. I'm, I'm like, what? I, You're I making a sandwich I right now. I think of my own Wednesday after that. I'm like, I don't have anything. <laughs> Anyhow, hey. welcome to the Well Season Kitchen. It's Thursday night at 5.30, and it is beautiful outside, so if you're inside hanging out with us, I'm incredibly grateful you're here. Thank you for joining us. I'm Angie, this is Chef Dennis, and uh, we're at Well Season, and tonight we're cooking with crab. It's my, one of my, fa it's actually probably my favorite thing out of the ocean, Dungeness Really? Crab. It is, and we're blessed with it. It was like 10 bucks a pound at uh, TNT, it's missing a single claw, whatever. I, I don't need the single claw. Utility crabs? Utility crabs, but it's usually like 40% off. So you just get two crab for the price of one. And uh, off you go. You still get your two claws and two body meats and all that. But it is super, super delicious. I pour, I think, in my opinion, it would give the run uh, to lobster for, for, how can I say that? Anyway, it's better than lobster is what Really? That's East a... East Coast can. That's a bold statement. It's not a bold, it's, it's a fact, I'm pretty sure. Hmm. All right. I googled it right before the segment. Both of them are basically a reason to eat butter, which I wholly support. I'm going to split, I'm going to serve you garlic butter tonight, but I'm going to split on that decision. I think olive oil and lemon juice is, is my, what, what I go. You know, I mean, there's no bad way to eat fresh crab. Exactly. And uh, David and I are really lucky. Our friend Jack, who you've met here several times, Jack and his beautiful wife, Perry Ann, they have a boat and they occasionally invite us out on their boat. Not occasionally, regularly. David and I are very lucky. And we go out and catch crab on the boat. And um, we've had some really amazing feasts. And, and honestly, there's, there's not a lot of things that's, that are more satisfying than catching your own dinner. You know, you have, you drop the crab trap, you have several glasses of wine. <laughs> you, should, you, should, you should try shooting a moose. <laughs> no, <It's a> handful. <laughs> no, uh, no, I'm, I'm good. I can, uh, but no, I agree with you. I I'll buy a steak. And, and also, like those crab that you just pulled out of the ocean. Because when you go to a market, uh, especially if it doesn't have a whole lot of traffic, you know, those artisanal fish, fish shops just takes an arm and a leg to buy anything. Um, they don't, they can't rotate their uh, stuff because it's, it, it doesn't have the pedestrian traffic or, or, or the sales. So that poor animal might be in there for a month. In the live tank. Yeah, yeah, in the live tank. So and and it's all starved and out of his mind and all that and his uh, deteriorating. Uh, but when you pull it right out of the ocean, it is, it's almost like really nicely salty. It doesn't need anything. Right. Uh, yeah. It is plump. I had the best uh, crabs of uh, crab I had uh, in. Uh, Other. That's a different <laughs> story, <laughs> chef. Maybe I'll share. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and call it. <laughs> no, in the oh Great Bay Rainforest. Mm. And uh, we've just been to this little protected area. And we just put a trap in. We, we are like, I don't know, 50 or 60? We, you just keep... And were they all keepers? No. Oh. No, uh, they were all keepers, but we oh. just kept whatever we're going to eat. I mean, we can't waste there. But I've never had crab like that. Yeah. It, it, was, it was incredible. It was plump. It was firm. It's... Kind yeah. of like me, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, um, yeah. uh, crab was my mom's favorite food. When my mom was alive, that was like really her favorite thing to eat. And so when she would come visit David and I, um, we would make crab boils for her. And that was like her favorite thing. So this food is really, uh, food is so personal to people. It brings like all these amazing memories sometimes or not so great memories sometimes. But 
Crab always reminds me of my mom, and she would have like been so happy. My mom would have driven here tonight from Calgary or from wherever she was to participate in this class tonight. They they serve they have crab in Calgary. Uh, well, you could buy like live crab at like the supermarket or at the fish market, or you could buy uh, frozen Sasha crab meat. Sasha freezes exceptionally yeah. well. Yeah. Um, so she would cook occasionally some frozen crab. She, when she was feeling like maybe when she got her income tax return or something and she was feeling really spendy, she would buy spendy. some king crab legs or something. Maybe it was their anniversary. Nice. I still can't afford that. She'd stuff. buy some king crab legs and kick us kids out of the house. And, or maybe she'd order us a pizza and send us to the basement and her and my dad <laughs> would eat king crab legs. Um, anyhow, so this food always reminds me of my mom. But I love that we have an opportunity um, almost all year uh, yeah, to catch our own crab here uh, locally. And now you can go to Barnett Marine Park in Burnaby. Yeah. And you can just catch crab there. Like, and, and there's a lot of people. They're kind of annoying in the off leash dog park, but <laughs> they get checked out and they make a stink. You're like, well, it's an off leash dog park. So if you catch yeah, your crab easy, fresh, yeah. like we occasionally do on the boat, uh, we'll bring the crab home. You obviously you kill it, clean it, and then it freezes really well as whole parts, so as legs and claws. Uh, and not, I'll show you, you something. Don't freeze the body. So this has been frozen, um, and this has been pulled out of the ocean and uh, got frozen. It is still very tight. Normally, when you hold a crab, it would go really, really like uh, what do you say, limp. Uh, out of a tank, but this this is so plump. I can't wait to eat this. Actually, I'm not gonna lie. So to that's you. one of the crab that uh, uh, we had in the freezer that were from one of the fishing trips on uh, Jack and Perry Ann's boat. Uh, but we also purchased some crab for tonight's class from One Fish Two Fish here in Langley. Um, they have live tanks all over the Lower Mainland. Um, you can buy them at most TNT supermarkets. Um, yeah, it's, it's not difficult to find here locally, and it is worth the money. It's, it's expensive. It's not something you're going to eat every single day. But I can, it's, honestly. It's great. <laughs> but it, it's a, a bit of work to, to pick all the crab from the shells. Um, but it is, but can I tell you this? It is a very satisfying work. Um, because it's, it's like eating sunflower seeds. Have you ever eaten them out of a shell? Yeah, of course. That's fun. When they're shelled, you can just eat them by the handful, and it's not as ex actually exciting, which, which I love. It's um, I also like to eat this on a on a date, like uh, so that's just you just go on to dates? Get, like the fruit, yeah. Mm. Uh, no, but uh, it's it's it is it is um, if you can get through a crab then on a date, that's a good date. <laughs> that is a good date. That is a good date. That is a good date. Pass the butter. That's what I say. Um, when I was a kid, my mom, when she would peel or, you know, pick her crab apart, she'd always um, crack the legs and break it all apart. And I find myself doing this now. Um, and she'd pile it all into a pile. And then she'd put it in the butter warmer. So her crab was like sitting in this hot butter. And nobody would take it off of her plate. So she'd do all this work to pick all the crab. And she'd stash it in her little butter warmer until she was ready to eat it all. And then she'd like just go to town on this whole thing of like this butter hot tub full of crab. Anyhow, um, damn, I miss my mom. She would have loved this class tonight. So I'm OK with that feeling. I, I... Missing your mom? Well, your mom's still alive. I do. I do, I do miss yeah. her every once in a while. Yeah. Um, so tonight we are cooking. We as a me. <laughs> If well, you haven't sweetie. figured it out by now. So we had a request last week, strangely enough, from one of our own staff, Melanie, uh, our store manager, Melanie. She asked for crab cakes, and I'm expecting her to roll in here any minute because I'm think sure. I'm take that two hours that I did extra for my paycheck. I, think <laughs> I, I, think I can justify that. Mel's getting the crab cake bill. So I'm expecting Melanie Sorry, to Mel. roll in any second to um, eat some crab cakes. She might. She knows there's crab on the menu. and. She has Facebook, so she probably knows what's going on. Um, so we're cooking crab cakes that you're turning into a burger. So Can I tell you this, though? Yeah, I I'm interested. I would not cook any of this food. I'm going to show you a couple of different things to do with crab. Just if you're like uh, Jack, let's say you just got a freezer full of this because you got a boat and you go out. And you're so sick of it to eat it fresh. Oh, it's exhausting. Uh, All the these crab. These are a couple of suggestions that you can do. But uh, I was working in this fishing lodge once, and uh, 
the owner of the lodge brought, they were having kind of like a boys weekend and they had some crab. And um, I broke it down. I actually made this recipe that I'm gonna do tonight. The burger? Uh, I served it as a crab cake, yeah. but the method is the same. Um, he comes to the kitchen after the dinner. He goes like, dude, that was an exceptional crab cake. One of the best I've had. He goes like, next time, save yourself the trouble. Give me the crab. So that's one. Because uh, if you're picking crab in a kitchen that has, uh, in a, or in a restaurant that has more than 50 seats, there is something wrong. Because like North American labor is not designed for that. <laughs> Okay, uh, so we always, as chefs in professional restaurants, we always um, serve crab as is. And the crab cakes usually has filler because it's so expensive. Let the customers do the work. I, exactly, I mean, yep. why am I working hard? And also, it eats so delicious, it's such a novelty item. Crab does not need your interpretation, but if you're really bored out of your mind, I'll show you a couple of recipes. <laughs> uh, or, or just like we did in that uh, boat, uh, in, on that excursion that, we pulled out five extra crabs that we can have crab cake eggs benedict the next morning. Oh my god. But, but that's a, you don't do that unless you have a boat and you're just crabbing out there. Um, so when I saw the recipes for tonight and you were turning the crab cake into a burger, I was kind of like, you know, just give me the crab cake. I don't need the bun. I don't need all the accoutrement. I just, I really want the crab to kind of tell the story. If I'm having a burger, I'll have, you know, maybe a salmon burger or a shrimp burger. But the crab, like you said, is a lot of work to pick for the actual burger. Yeah, Mel is paying for that. <laughs> Mel, sorry, Mel. Um, okay, talk to me about tinned crab meat. Uh, do you use, is there any purpose for tinned crab meat? I, I live in Great Pacific Northwest, so I never well, show the dress. I mean, we live here where we can access this, but have you used tinned crab meat? So it's actually a pretty decent product. So it is Dungeness crab that's canned, and you can buy small batch crab, or sorry, small batch canned crab meat that's harvested and, and packed locally. It's expensive, but if you're, maybe you are Sarah and you live in Saskatchewan and you can't access fresh crab on the Just regular, don't eat crab. but you still want to have crab. So you Why? can buy some decent tinned crab because people want to live deep. They want to have crab when they live in Saskatchewan. North America wants everything all the time. It's exhausting. Don't eat crab if it's not good. So it is good in a can sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes. You can buy good, high-quality canned crab, just like you can buy uh, high-quality lobster, trout, salmon, all of that stuff. So, in a can? Yes. I refuse to eat canned fish in the Great North Pacific. Okay. Um, your I, I, your I friend, Chef didn't... Charlotte Langley, she makes some killer... Um, canned uh, seafood on the East Coast. She, she does a lot of things good. <laughs> Anyhow, that's another story. Hi, um, Charlotte. Remember um, the book night? Never mind. So we're also making spring rolls tonight, crab spring rolls. Yeah. So this is like your, it's pork and crab. Pork and crab is, get along this, really this, well. This, yeah, this is it's a, a good traditional combo. recipe, and it's also, if you don't have a whole lot of crab, uh, it's a great way to stretch it out, but uh, let me get into it. So the crab and pork, if you go, um, visit Asian restaurants, you'll quite often see it as a really good combination in dumplings or where else would it be? Like as a, do they use pork on fried crab uh, as a, no. no. So the fried crab, when you go for whole crab in like a Chinese restaurant, you can get like the creamy garlic crab, you can get the dry garlic and green onion It's a crab. great way of eating crab too. It's mm -hmm. just, uh, it's, it's way more flavorsome, especially if you go to Manam uh, of Angus, uh, order, you have to call them 48 hour in advance. Uh, order the black pepper crab. It just comes in this sticky black pepper uh, glaze and it's so messy and so awesome and so delicious. Mm, that's awesome. So tonight we're pairing our crab with um, some Meyer family Chardonnay. This is a 2019 Chardonnay. Crab loves the buttery sort of richness of a Chardonnay. It also likes Pinot Gris. Um, crab really likes sort of mm, white. Summertime mm, wines. Yeah, so it's yeah. really easy to kind of hang out catch a couple crab like we do and hang out on the boat and drink too much and eat a lot of butter. So awesome. anyhow, Let me get to this. all right. So Jen has posted the recipes in the comments. If you have questions while he's cooking, feel free to ask them. Uh, but we'll check back in a few minutes when this stuff is ready. Um, so thanks for joining us and um, let, I see you bye have bye. some wine. So get all cooking. Right. So again, this is a novelty recipe. It's 
with a fresh Dungeness crab, especially after spending all that time uh, just picking it, I would just eat it as is. Uh, but let's just have some fun. This is for you. Because uh, we are allowed to. Now, this is coming up to temperature. So, first recipe is the uh, crab spring rolls. As Angie mentioned, it's very common in uh, Vietnamese restaurants, uh, especially in Mr. Red Cafe. It's a great bang for your buck, and it is delicious. So, for this, I am going to need some coriander powder, uh, cilantro powder. Fresh cilantro, ground pork, lean or fatty, it doesn't matter. Um, fennel seeds, garlic and ginger goes into a little bowl. And my uh, nice uh, picked meat, you have your proportions in your recipe, so just follow along. Chef, were those fennel seeds raw or toasted that went in? No, they're not. They're raw? They're not. I wouldn't call them raw, but they're not toasted. Okay. Yeah. Um, Dried. People, a lot of, okay, toasting uh, spice is kind of tricky. A lot of people burn their spice. High heat destroys essence. And it is not uh, ideal uh, to toast them uh, in high heat, but very, very gentle. And um, as soon as the heat actually heats, hits this, it will actually be perfectly toasted as well. So I'm not a big fan of overly toasted spices, but just, you just gotta awaken them, okay? And now, what I, normally I would do a larger batch and I would do this in the uh, food processor. Um, what I'm looking at is a sausage kind of consistency. Now, it is hard to achieve, but at, at this little t uh, span of time. Uh, so I, I made a little bit ahead of time. I'm gonna put this to the side. I'm gonna show you this one that I have made earlier. And I'm just like uh, portioning them into two ounce uh, little balls. As you can see, it is very sausagey. And I'm going to uh, give it a little sausage shape also. Chef, Jack has a question. Uh, Jack Gatta wants to know about soft shell crab. I was just gonna know he does. <laughs> Um, do we have soft shell crab here in BC? No, like, no, I don't think we don't. I don't think so. I don't think we do. And I, when I have Dungeness, I would eat king crab because it's still from somewhat uh, native to the area. But soft shell crab, in its in its uh, country of origin or whatever it is uh, in US, where would they uh, harvest it? If you would. I think they come out of the Gulf. David, is it a southern thing? I. Uh, I'm just looking it up to see where it comes from. I'm at 181. Now, uh, spring rolls, spring roll wrappers. They are dirt cheap. Just go to your uh, oriental uh, supermarket. They are there. They're in the freezer section. All of them are just fantastic. They're the greatest convenience. And when you do this recipe, please do it in large numbers. I made some ahead of time, so you don't watch me rolling uh, spring rolls. Okay, and then uh, freeze them. Freeze them on a flat sheet or tray. Once they're frozen, put them in a Ziploc bag and you can cook them from frozen by all means. So it is a great convenience. We actually do the feta cheese and a parsley version in Turkey a whole lot. And um, uh, yeah, so when, are you, when you're pulling off your spring roll uh, uh, pastry, Please don't yank it. Gently peel it off. My hand pressure is very, very, very light. I'm sure bakers would know this, right? So where do you buy those? They're in the grocery store where the... They are um, in the Oriental supermarkets in the freezer uh, section. Oh, in the freezer. Okay, yeah, thank in you. in the freezer section. Now, this two can just like stay out here for a minute. I have one. And for this also, you will need a little slurry, equal amounts of uh, flour and water, just to seal the edge. So, this is how it goes. My little uh, piece of pork and crab just goes in, maybe almost like an inch to the edge. Let's rinse out a hand, not contaminate that rag. So the soft shell crabs do come from the south, and uh, David just said that it's um, like the beginning of the animal, so. Uh, before it hardens yeah. up, yeah. Oh, so, is it really? Mm -hmm. What kind of crab are they? 
It's called a, uh, the heck is it called? I just had it here, sorry. Oh. So uh, my temperature is coming up to the right spot. Now with this, if you're cooking from frozen, 300 Fahrenheit is your best bet. If you're cooking from um, fresh, just like this, I will, it needs to spend at least uh, three, four minutes in there. So I would go like 275. I'm around 300, but I'm gonna drop like about eight of them. So uh, the pointed side looks to you. Just tuck in the edges to the other side, and then just grab this, bring it back. Oh, this is fun. I've never done this before. Okay, bring it back. Whoever is texting me, I can't come to the form right now. <laughs> so leave a message. And then, even if it rolls itself. So once you come to the very, very end of it, you grab your little slurry. Just a tip. Just around the tip. the tip. And then you just tuck it and with the lightest hand pressure, just, just roll it and off it goes. It's not rocket science. So let's go in here and we're going to drop a bunch of them while we do our uh, dipping sauce. Perfect. So, well. so sorry, chef. The oil you're frying in tonight, is this your grapeseed oil like normal? No, I am not. I've been warned by the management that it's too expensive. <laughs> oh, suddenly you're on a budget? I, I'm not. She is, oh, probably. That's, oh, you are. Sorry. I you didn't get here. that memo that the kitchen was going on budget. That's good to know right there. We're just serving a... Uh, the best for the for our friends is what it is. Right. I guess on your budget. But, uh, okay, I'm dropping them in about like an inch. So if these were frozen, chef, would you drop them from frozen or would you thaw Absolutely. them? Absolutely. Okay. From frozen, it works like a charm for sure. You want to live that dangerously? See how ugly this gets. Oh boy. Oh, dude, no. Okay, that was a bad idea. Uh, the soft shell crabs are called buster crabs, and they're um, in the southern U.S. and in Spain, actually, which is kind of cool. And I'm pretty sure they uh, have them in Japan as well, no? Yes, sir. Look at you. You're just a font of knowledge today. It's not fitting in there, so we're just going to skip this one until the, after the segment. Oh, staff meal tomorrow. <laughs> now I have something uh, All 12 of us will share a spring roll tomorrow. That's exciting. Yeah, well, it's summertime and we're going for the banging beach body, so we got to keep yours <laughs> tight. So while that is happening, let's get rid of whatever you don't need. Please get rid of your station. Get it out of your station so you don't look like an amateur. Pro tip. Pro tip. Um, all right. For the dipping sauce, because we're in North America, we got to dip everything, right? Um, hello. No, Chef, no. sorry, what is your um, expected time on that? Like, Doug. Doug is my expected time. <laughs> no. I mean, are you talking like five or six minutes on that? So here's the thing. You have to just have a good balance of browning, but at the same time, you have almost like a three-quart, half an inch thick uh, little sausage roll in there. So you can't go too fast that you're going to brown being raw, or you can't go too slow that... You know, just uh, the sausage inside is going to get cooked and split and seize up. So technical. Believe it or not, cooking is. I don't uh, know if Doug's with us tonight. I haven't heard from him yet. We're down to around 250 Fahrenheit. All right, it's picking up. So tamarind. Tamarind is one of those uh, life's great pleasures. It's used for its acidity. Um, you can buy a tamarind pulp with seeds. I suggest just skip that one because um, now you got to just like boil it in the water, strain it, and all that. I'm using a tamarind concentrate tonight. It's sour. Pinch of chilies. And uh, since we're Canadian, we're just going to add a little bit of maple syrup. You have your proportions. And this is going to be our uh, dippy dip for the night. There's no sherry vinegar in there? What the hell? Yeah, I'm um, adventurous this week. <laughs> okay, living on the edge. I don't even know you anymore. Oh, uh, yeah, nobody does. No, it's true. Okay, it's a nice dipping sauce consistency. Always keep your eye on it, especially when you have an overloaded pot like this. So tamarind and maple syrup, that's your dipping sauce? 
tamarind, maple syrup, pinch of salt, and chili flakes. Now, I have one that is ready to come out. What you look at internal temperature is about like 160. I mean, that looks good already, right? It's nice, it's crispy, it's uh, hoping it's crabby and uh, porky and all that uh, beautiful things. Okay, this is happening. Now, if you overcook this, uh, the sausage meat in there, or, or, or the ground pork that's been turned into sausage meat, might expand and give you a little crack like this. It's not the end of the world. It's not uh, seeping into my oil. So that's, that means that you've done a good job. We're gonna check seasoning on this. So chef, would this filling work in a wonton as well, like a smaller version that you could cook into a soup or something, or the same into idea for the filling? For wontons, like yeah, um, yeah, yeah. a dumpling yeah, or? Um, maybe fried wontons, absolutely. I agree with, with that. I wouldn't put them in a soup. Uh, this is uh, eaten for its uh, crispiness. Crisp, crispiness. Now let's uh, grab our plates. I'm plating uh, large tonight. I know, it's a bit suspicious. I'm just gonna put it on uh, six plates and leave it around the room and uh, figure out if Angie's gonna find it or not. Well, see if what? I missed that. Because you weren't listening, man. Cheeky comment. No. I've been like repeating myself. That this is the third time now. I was saying hello to Melanie because, you know, I promised you she'd roll in at some point. And uh, look who's here. Oh, yeah. She, she arrived. This Let's crab see. class was Mel's idea. I don't think she knows she's getting the bill yet, but we'll see how that works out for her. Uh, I don't think you should just tell her, we'll just get it off the right resource, like they take your tax off it. Oh, just like the federal government? Yeah. The crab tax off I Mel's next tax. paycheck? We'll see how that goes over. I think that is completely your, yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't tell Justin, he'll make us collect GST on top of that. Some funky new payroll tax, only at Well Seasoned. The crab tax. You owe me crab money. Okay, now this one is just like a little bit of brownage. I actually done a good job on that sausage bind because uh, <laughs> it looks really strong. It looks I'm like glad this. you're so proud of yourself, Chef. Of course I am. I got the jaw. Um, really? Dipping sauces. I think Nikki's still here too. It's weird that all of our staff shows up on crab night. Right? So I can pick Jenna, crab for like David, two, two Nikki. hours. The I'm hell? like, everybody showed up. Sorry. I'm glad they did though. It was just a little bit of extra work. They're worth it. I am in charge of that uh, judgment. <laughs> I do actually. I, I love cooking for my friends, and uh, as you know, we cook staff, fresh staff meal every day here. Um, apparently, which wasn't the case. But uh, right now, um, I missed today's staff meal. I came in late. It was it was dry bread with uh, salami and uh, oh. coagulated cheese. Oh, that's why I missed today's staff meal. <laughs> So, um, these are ready. Let me see, how many are we? Two, four, so six. So these need to be served hot, yeah? Warm is fine. This can be just chilled to um, uh, room temperature and it will still eat uh, wonderful because there is not a whole lot of butter fat in there, right? Um, this will eat perfectly at room temperature. Below room temperature though, I would um, avoid it because the pork fat might coagulate and it might, wait, my math is off. So if you're having guests over, you might wanna, uh, you can't really fry these off too far in advance. You can, you just keep them on a rack so they don't just. Uh... Look at David, he's so excited for the Are you going for spring it? rolls. Is... Oh yeah. yeah. What, what, what a kind man. 
I think David's excited for the spring rolls. I would be. See? That's a power of math. <laughs> That's one and a half per person. All right, um, let's just pass this around. Okay, right, I'm I think coming you're over to have some spring yep. rolls right there now. You go, sir. And there are a bunch of dipping sauces. So nobody's upset. Ooh, it's very hot. It is going to be hot. Very hot. Uh, there's quite a amount of moisture in there, so, uh, but. That's mine, don't drink mine. Oh, that's yours? This is oh, yours. Yeah, 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 sorry. Get your own wine. Uh, ah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, one more time, the mixture of the sausage has onions. Uh, nope. Yeah, there's green onions. What else? No herbs? There's no green onions. What no. else is in there? Uh, there's a bit of a parsley. Normally, yeah. the recipe calls for chives, but you can't eat raw onions, so I just skipped it. And uh, there's crab, ginger, garlic, uh, ground pork, and um, yeah, and, and, and just a tad of salt. A tad of salt being a terrible. 2%. I know. It's terrible. I know. I know. Um, this is, uh, it's really meaty. I'm not sure I'm getting a ton of the crab, but. This is, this is, this is cold uh, when, when you have not a whole lot of crab. You, you gotta extend it, extend and it. then you charge $22 for this and tell people no, it's crab. No, 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 you go to Mr. Red Cafe, you get four of these for 12 bucks. There are still a lot of hardworking immigrants uh, doing, uh, doing an amazing job. And, like and, you? No, I think I just skipped that space. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah. Jenna doesn't eat crab. Jenna doesn't eat crab. I, I'm not going to eat on camera. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> He'll eat it later. Okay, yeah. so what's next, Chef? Uh, uh, next burger. will be the crab burger. All right. And then, you know what? Carry on. Let's just do a uh, good old-fashioned crab, crab oil. dinner also. Yeah. So for that crab dinner... Mm, crab, not craft. Crab. <laughs> which is completely fine. I, I, don't, I don't mind craft dinner. That's a hot pot, so don't touch it. So for this, I'm gonna get my uh, two pans going and get them started to just to warm up because I'm going to shallow fry these, okay? Okay, um, let's just put this here. Here, I'll look after that for you. Absolutely, or uh, Nikki might be around still, actually. Nikki's busy, I'll hold it. She. Um, <laughs> all right. So for this one, we are going to uh, set up a little breading station. We talked about this before. And I'm going to give you the recipe that I usually don't give to anybody. This is a nick off of uh, Marco Pierre White's uh, lobster ravioli, which Gordon Ramsay used to make, actually. That um, Now, when you go to the restaurants, crab meat is incredibly expensive. It is just an expensive meat. It goes, uh, if it's picked, because uh, if you get it in and get it picked, it'll cost you more in labor. So there are, uh, well, since we have fresh crab all the time, like Adanak seafood, uh, they have people uh, that pick crab all day. I don't know how they live with themselves. Must be a, a mental job. But, um, but you can buy them 40 bucks a pound. But it's all picked for you and it's ready to go, which, which is, and it's been, uh, it's always cooked to order. So if you were, let's say, uh, picking up uh, five pounds of crab meat, it's been cooked the day before, it's been picked, and it's never been frozen and this and that. Um, so I got my uh, picked crab meat. Now, in the restaurants, just because this is such a high um, price point as far as the cost goes, what restaurants used to do is just add uh, eggs to this to bind it. Then they add uh, breadcrumbs. Then they add a bunch of vegetables so that they can just like weigh in on, on the crab's cost. Now, today, that's not our concern because the less you do to crab, the better it's going to taste. And today, I am just going to use butter, just a good old butter to uh, bind our crab. But here's the problem with butter. Once the inside melts, uh, even if it's breaded, it's going to go away. So I need a protein. And for that protein, I am using a West Coast delicacy, smoked salmon. So what I've done here is took a bunch of parsley, a little bit of parsley, smoked salmon, 
uh, you have uh, the, the proportions on your recipe, and then room temperature butter, and I put it in a kitchen processor until it is just like a compound butter of smoked salmon. So what is this is going to do is it's not going to uh, flavor our crab, um, but all the other additives because we're having a luxury ver luxury version today because we worth it. And, oh, we're uh, worth it. Uh, and then uh, L'Oreal, right? But that compound butter would work really well on lots of other things. Incredible. Uh, any any sh shellfish dish. If you're making a ravioli, you're making a fish burger, you've got some trim, you need a binder. And if you can afford it, this is the ultimate way of doing it. If you want a lighter uh, version of this with uh, less of the butter fat, uh, you can always more than welcome to use thick yogurt. Uh, and thick yogurt works brilliantly. Sour cream works brilliantly. But butter, it's better. But that smoked salmon flavor would be really delicious mixed into like maybe some um, like new potatoes or on top of a piece of anything, halibut anything. would be it's, really it's, it good. It is, yeah. It's just yeah. very simple. Pinch your herbs of your liking, tarragon, sage, whatever it is. Yeah. Smoke sa equal amount of smoked salmon, soft butter, blitz, and you got yourself a little feast. Now I'm going to take my uh, crab meat, get it in my bowl. Then I'm going to get my uh, smoked salmon butter and I'm going to put it right here. Then I'm going to uh, put a glove on because it's going to be way faster than... Uh, um, oh man, that I didn't plan for. And once you make a compound butter like that, you can refrigerate it or even freeze it into you little pieces. You can freeze it and it will be just fine for the next six to eight months depending on the quality of your freezer. Now I'm gonna toss this around. I'm gonna put a pinch of salt in here. Slightest pinch because uh, seafood is about sweetness. It doesn't need aggressive seasoning. And the okay. smoked salmon's also salty. That's already in the uh, butter. Yeah. I mean, it depends on the smoked salmon and, and whatever you're using in your cooking. Please, please, please um, taste it and then gauge it. If it's not salty enough, homemade smoked salmon would more likely to be saltier because uh, home people don't know what, sometimes don't know what the hell is going on, right? And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to turn this into a little bowl. So you didn't add any egg in there. So the only binder... I was actually going to say that. Sorry, the oh. recipe has an egg, but it's just been misplaced because uh, it's, it's, it's a typo. So get that egg in there. The only binder is butter so and smoked salmon, which pro when protein cooks, yeah. it coagulates. When it coagulates, it holds on to its structure. So what it's going to do is a really nice lush. So we'll ask Jenna to update the recipe to remove the egg from it. Yes. I was uh, a bit distracted when I wrote it. I wrote these recipes every week, eh? Mm -hmm. It's not like I uh, go on Pinterest or anything. They're very actually uh, original recipes. Well, it is your job, but whatever. Yeah, but I mean, uh, I know a lot of people <laughs> that has those jobs and go on Pinterest to find out things. So I just sit there in, uh, in my uh, dark living room. And, uh, you and Louie, sitting there, me and Louis, drinking wine, writing recipes. Writing recipes. Living the dream. Living the dark and the dream. Dark, dark and stormy? Was that a cocktail? I think it is. So, after we have this uh, beautiful uh, bowl of crab, smoked salmon, and butter, what we're going to do is, obviously, ahead of time I made some of these, so you don't watch me bread salmon, or sorry, crab cakes. So let's get these frying. So we gain some momentum. My frying oil, right? We have oil, we don't need more oil. And you gotta be generous. I would say about half an inch, maybe third of an inch thick. You don't want the metal, hot metal to cook your uh, crab cakes, then uh, you would scorch them. Now I'm just gonna get this started. Chef Barb would like to know when your um, cookbook's coming out. I said, uh, maybe you write the Crab Granny's cookbook. No, but Barb, that was a good guess. I have a surprise for you. Oh, God. For all of you in about uh, three weeks. Uh-oh. I made a deal even when I had a job. Um, no, I'm kidding. Uh, 
I'm not kidding about the deal, but uh, it's, I, I have an announcement in about three weeks to whom are interested. An announcement? I'm excited for this big announcement. I don't know. I got tons of time for announcements. <laughs> so, anyway, I'm um, so. Now we're just going to set up a good old uh, breading station, flour. Actually, you know what? Since we have, uh... okay. So just like I told you, I wouldn't cook these recipes with crab, but if I have fresh crab meat. So for that, I'm going to show you the best way of uh, eating crab. Fresh crab, pot of salted boiling water. If you're on a boat, just get a bucket in the seawater so you don't uh, uh, use salt, save some money. And once this is like lightly simmering, get your crab right in the water. Now, cooking crab is like cooking eggs. You can't be too aggressive or you can't be too gentle. It'll go sideways in either form. So, um, that's a bonus recipe too, hey? So that's straight into the water. There's no, uh, there's nothing in that water. No aromatics. No. It's just water. It just doesn't need it. As long as it's nice salty water, just like when uh, they were in the ocean. So while all this is uh, frying, and you want a medium heat, you don't want too aggressive. Um, or you're also more than welcome to just freeze these cakes and cook it from frozen. But if you're cooking from frozen, then you gotta use medium low, or maybe just like brown it on both sides and pop it in the oven for like five minutes. Our breading station starts with flour and egg. I'm just gonna whisk this egg around. Now, like in that pan, as things uh, heat, they will expand and push out moisture. Hold the whole breading station, the whole uh, idea to breading, which I'm gonna put my burger buns in the fridge too, and uh, uh, oven. Oven, my, fridge, uh, whatever. drunken uh, burger buns. Chef, Barb thinks your uh, secret announcement is that you're inviting all of your Facebook fans to dinner. Do I have fans? You should do better things with your time, Barb. <laughs> Barb uh, was here today to say hello. It was I nice know. to see you, Barb. Um, no, no, no. It's uh, no. It it is. Uh, well, we're Facebook friends. You'll see. I got big plans. <laughs> thinking of Brace a Brace yourself, Barb. Thinking of a master plan, and so far that's the plan. So, this goes into my flour mixture. Toss it around. Now, flour is the first uh, coagulant. Uh, that is, if any moisture would push out, it will be absorbed by the flour, so it doesn't escape. Because you don't want hot fat and uh, moisture escaping. This is a recipe for disaster. Nothing excess, nice and light. Okay, just push it around, get rid of the excess. Gets into the egg, and uh, you're gonna cover it with an egg, just a whipped egg. There's not that whole lot of secrets to it. And then goes into my breadcrumbs. I use panko breadcrumbs because uh, it's got more texture. It's a coarse ground uh, uh, breadcrumbs, right? Breadcrumbs, so which gives you a little bit more extra, extra crunch. So this is the point where you would freeze them, right? After they come out of the breading, you'd put them on a tray and freeze them from exactly. there. Exactly. So once they come out, like a little round bowl like that, put it in a little cookie cutter. And then you press them down. So fancy. Okay. You press them down. Now, when you press them down, especially around this size, you might have a little bit of exposed crab meat. Go back to the panko. Any moisture that's been exposed is going to uh, catch up to the panko. And you have yourself a delicious crab patty that's been bound with butter. This is a bit too fresh to fry, so what I would like to do is grab a little plate, and I'm gonna put this in the fridge or the freezer for the butter to harden, so it's got a nice body to it, so it's not soft. Let's get rid of all this, okay? And it's not falling apart, because don't forget, as, uh, even if you have the smoked salmon, 
inside will be liquefied when the butter melts. So let's just, I'm gonna flip my crab cakes. And sorry, chef, what are you frying in? Is that olive oil? I've just been through this. So, no, I'm just asking for a recap. Oh man. So, some okay. people have just joined uh, it us. It is just uh, vegetable oil. We used to use grapeseed oil, but the management shut now us you're down. Now you on a budget. Can, yeah, we've been through it. And you're not listening today. I'm listening, but some new people have just joined us, Chef. I'm not the only one participating. Okay. So. But mostly I do tune you out, so <laughs> there you go. So, cheers. Uh, any questions about any of this? I was just asking you questions, and I got a whole bunch of uh, flack for that. But oh, man. Let's so, start what, over. What time are the crab cake going to be ready in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> you should ask that to Angie. She's got a great recipe for uh, what method? The uh, Vitamix uh, Hollandaise method? Blender Hollandaise. Don't get us started on the Hollandaise. He has uh, PTSD on the Hollandaise. I don't, actually. I actually uh, made my uh, career on a brunch. Yeah. So, since we're uh, North American again, we need a dippy dippy. Oh, thank God, some dipping sauce. No, actually, not dipping sauce. We gotta make our burgers. You know what? I'm gonna skip the dipping sauce today. And I am going to dress this just like as a McDonald's McChicken. Uh, for our spread, we have a little remoulade. Fancy word for uh, flavored mayonnaise is what it is. Um, I'm not going to show you because you got the recipe. It's mayonnaise, lemon juice, uh, if need be, depending on the mayonnaise, uh, pinch of smoked paprika, and some handful of uh, capers. And it's, it's as simple as that. Again, we do not want to uh, overpower our crab because it's as precious as it is. On the other hand, our um, crab is boiling. I find five minutes to six minutes is a good place to be for boiled crab, depending on the size of the crab and depends on if you're boiling them whole or if you're boiling them um, Without the organs, there is an applicator. There are a bunch of applications that also eats the head meat of the crab. They just flip it upside down, put all the organ meat in there, and they just like boil it until it splits and uh, splits the fat, and they use it as a crab dip. But uh, I, I, I don't uh, care for it. I usually, if I buy crab, I usually just would get rid of the organ meat so I don't have to put it in my compost, and the bears show up or the raccoons show up, and, you know. So, uh, what do you so move to the Fraser Valley now, Chef? No. Oh. Not even close. But. Uh, but anyway, so uh, it's a bit easier, and and, and uh, flavor-wise, I think uh, I'm, I'm I'm going for the royal fillet. Now let's take our buns. That's some drunken kid made in uh, the bakery. Some drunk kid. <laughs> Uh, Marie is joining us tonight. This is Marie's first class, I think. Welcome, Marie. Nice to see you here. Let's do this. Uh, hi, Marie. Now, when I toast the bread, some people like to put butter and fry it. I toast them whole, and once you open them up, you will have this wonderfully um, re uh, re um, softened breadcrumb that is so luxurious and the crunch comes from the outside again it always gets me look at that so chef marie's asking about the organ meat inside the crab so typically the um uh what do they call it is it the oyster that's green inside the i uh, know it is the tamale, the tamale thank tamale, you yeah. yeah the tamale tamale and um i mean i think most people would just discard that when they're cleaning the crab do you have any reason to keep that? I do. You can um, take the tamale. Uh, I think it's called tamale when it's, an, uh, it's a lobster. But you can take the head meat. Uh, you can put it in a dehydrator, uh, completely dehydrated at 100 Fahrenheit until it's really brittle. Then you can blitz and season fish with it. Like, fine restaurant scene has a lot of uses for it, but in a daily basis, I'm not going to, you know... Yeah, feels like but a lot can. of work for the it's home cook. It's not a lot of work, but it's just uh, it's advanced cooking and it's on home cooks. You don't need to just go there. Unless if you're really, really interested. 
I dip my hand in hot fat. Now, this is cooked. What we're trying to do is just put a nice crust on the outside and not to mess with it too, too, too much. All right, that pan is going good. I'm gonna raise the temperature and put a nice color on this. In the meantime, such as cooking happens, uh, our uh, boiled crab is ready. There's a lot of components tonight. I feel exhausted. As you can see, it is one of the most delicious things that you can eat. So, and I'm going to show you how to plate it as well. I like to chop crab into chops. If we're having a communal shared plate, I usually have my own crab and uh, growl at other people if they're trying to have a go at it. But that's me. Now comes the burger. Um, as you can see, it is wonderfully golden brown. I'm going to transfer it on my wire rack here, which you can buy from World Season. Angie, are you ready for some crab burger or what? I am so ready. All right, can I have that bottle of wine, please? <laughs> uh, your appearance is optional. I just want the wine. That's good, good to know. Um, I learned all this uh, jargon from you, so just so you know. It's gotten very cheeky in the last year. I learned all this from you. What? No. I was a, I was a shy cook, and uh, just when mm. I first started here. Really? What? Yeah. I was just like rosy cheek and like. Ee. Oh my God! No. Yeah. And uh, then uh, I learned the phrase, uh, your, your face is, 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 is a famous <laughs> phrase. Um, That's our friend Shelly's phrase. Is That's it? not mine. That's Shelly all the time. You know what? I'm going to go right. So, Chef, Sarah would like to know if you're going to save that um, crab boiling water to make stock. No. No. Sorry, Sarah. No. Uh, because there is a different method to making a crab stock, and that's not it. Um, so maybe he'll tell us what that is. So if you want to make a good, delicious crab stock, just please um, uh, take your shells after you um, um, pick the crab. Pick the crab, and then uh, put them in an oven until they're dry and the whole place smells like what the hell is going on uh, from your oven, and then um, and then you boil them. What it does is it dehydrates the, all the leftover residue in the crab uh, shells, okay? And then uh, it, then it imparts uh, a proper shellfish flavor to the dish. Ooh. Otherwise, uh, crab is very, very, very neutral. Now, I'm gonna show you how to uh, put up an elegant plate together with no garnish or unnecessities because crab is that great. And we're confident cooks. We don't need garnish. Garnish is for children. Um, little lime veg. Little lime veg. One in here. One in here, one in here. It's like a cooking class in here tonight. It's weird. <laughs> and a big uh, hand of uh, unseasoned or not dressed. Lettuce. Naked lettuce. Lettuce. Naked lettuce. What'd you say, David? I'm McLovin'. <laughs> He's McLovin' it. It does look a bit like a McChicken, not it gonna is, lie. No, the, I, I told you in the beginning, that's the whole inspiration. A McChicken? Which I find McChicken has a bit too much mayonnaise, too saucy, too saucy. I don't think I've ever had a McChicken. I grew up in Middle East on McChicken. And really? then, and then a little hat like this. I mean, come on, look at this presentation. It's confident forward. Hopefully it delivers. <laughs> Hopefully. I might get a bad Yelp review. Well, let's find out how your Yelp works out for you because uh, tonight's cooking class is the... Sponsored um, by Yelp? <laughs> sponsored by Yelp. <laughs> oh my God, I hate Yelp. Oh, I hate Yelp. So our cooking class tonight was Melanie's idea. So I don't know if you guys have all met Melanie, our store manager, but um, hey, give me that. Oh yeah, you got it. Yeah. 
Uh, so I'm going to invite Melanie over. She's going to give you a Yelp review. Oh, no. So here's your wine, chef. I'm going to get out of the way, and I'm going to send Melanie your way, and she's going to... Could you gonna... leave the burger? No. Mel's got her own burger. I got to go over there and grab it now. Okay, Mel. Get first, up in there. First time on TV, sorry. Or uh, computers. Mel, let me give you my microphone. Well, I mean, look at this. Look at the presentation. He's so proud of himself tonight. Right? <clears throat> Thank you, Dennis. Oh, you got one too? Yes. Who else is not having one? You. Oh, yeah, that's mine. Should we, we need to cheers burgers. Okay, Mel, get up here. Let's see how your uh, oh. crab cake class is. Super juicy. It's all the butter that's just melted. Super juicy. Oh, Dennis. That's good. <laughs> oh, Dennis. Good thing I'm married. <laughs> <laughs> Um, mm. oh, glad you liked it. Now for our regular crab boil. You know what? I'm going to move to right here, and I'm going to show you mm. how to serve this. Amazing. Thank you. So you have the half. You just cut it into like little uh, crab chops. Again. Now, if you want to be nice to your guests, Take, take your chop, take the shells, and make a little incision so they can break easily, but I am not a nice guy. And uh, maybe double chops. And to this. Is this your favorite way to eat crab chef, just uh, straight out of the pot like this? Straight out of the pot. It doesn't need anything else, but I will uh, serve some garlic butter with it. And just like little, and I also don't use crab crackers because uh, we naturally have the best crackers. And crab shells are not that hard. And if you need to pick crab instead of those things, use one of those. It comes with the package so you don't have to uh, pay extra. Uh, crab dice for lemon. Some lemon wedges. And then, uh, yeah, literally uh, you just drop this on the middle of the table. Now, that being said, since uh, we all love garlic butter. Am I getting old? Oh, it's here. Am I, am I getting old? You are getting old, but that's another story. And we all are going to die. Dennis, I'm taking you home. <laughs> there we are. If you can afford them, you can have them. Call your mortgage broker. <laughs> uh, two uh, two uh, garlic butter. Little Dungeness crab. And uh, et voila sauce, that's it. So yeah. what was it? I don't know, I didn't eat it. episode? Mel, ah. how is it? Hey, Amazing. Is it everything you hope for and more? Everything and more. <laughs> um, so I think tonight is a really good exercise in utilizing some fresh local ingredients. But I think um, for me, my favorite way still to um, my favorite way still to enjoy some fresh local crab is just straight out of the pot. You can't beat that. No, nobody can beat that. Right, it's really hard to beat some fresh butter, a little garlic, a squeeze of lemon, and a glass of Chardonnay, and I'm like super happy. Um, you're I happy earned, too. I earned this glass of wine. <laughs> I cook three dishes, and I think that looks good. It does look really good. Um, David, has your crab burger? Excellent. Very good. No David? binders, it's no filler. Better, it's much better than the McChicken. <laughs> <laughs> David uh, loves a crab burger. Yeah, we, we got to talk about that. I don't know. We got to talk about I like Mac chicken. <laughs> David tastes... loves some crab cakes. Let's see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so this summer, we are working on some menus for um, uh, like meal kits kind of thing to go and we're doing um, a seafood boil is one of our meals but we're doing with uh, prawns which is kind of the same idea you could do with this so if you were if you had crab and you didn't have a ton of crab and you wanted to extend it because you were having maybe some friends on the patio or whatever you could boil the crab with some potatoes some sausage some corn on the cob and make a which really good presentation they just put like paper on a 
table, on the table and tip mm -hmm. the and whole thing out? tip the whole thing out. Yeah. I mean, not tip it out because there's broth, but, but you know, just take the solids out and everybody sits around. and. Um, but it's a really great way to entertain. Have a couple glasses of wine, some really good fresh crab, and the sausage, um, the sausage and the aromatics in the liquid flavor the crab while it's cooking, which is kind of a fun way to do it. But really, like Chef did tonight, just straight up crab, doesn't need a whole lot of other embellishments. How's your no, wine? No, 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 I, I love this wine. I, I drink this all the time, so I'm not. not you do? Yeah. The Meyer Chardonnay? I didn't know you were a Chard guy. I'm not. I thought you were a red wine dude. As long as I'm not paying for it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, no, uh, Meyer, I've been, uh, my, my friend, the sommelier, Kieran Fanny, uh, just introduced me to the whole Meyer family, and I actually, I usually drink red wine. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, yeah, white wine is for breakfast. Is, uh, what it is. Um, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Not breakfast, lunch, and dinner, or rosé, yeah, for sure. But, uh, yeah, I, I love the whole Meyer family. They, yeah. I think their whites, I have, I don't think I had their reds yet, but their whites are excellent. They it's are. Excellent. We are so lucky to live in BC and have access to all this beautiful wine, beautiful fresh crab, Melanie, Dennis. Yeah, we have it all well, right season. here. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I really want to thank you guys for joining us tonight. Um, thank you to Jack and Perry Ann for bringing the crab that also they caught off it, their boat. Drop a comment for the next week's episode yeah. if you would like to see anything within reason. So we do have some uh, episodes coming up in the next few weeks. And I understand it's going to be a little bit slower during the summer because people, you know, weirdly have other things to do, not like you and I. Um, I, I just sit indoors and do math. So we'll be uh, here every Thursday no, no, night. Math. I do. I just, I just enjoy it. I'm like, it's like 40 degrees outside. I'm like, I don't, I don't care. Let me just work on my yields from this recipe right now. Pass me my calculator. And where's my gelato? I'm going to need some gelato to go with that. He's on this gelato thing right now. It's a phase. It's a phase, away. yeah. All right. Let's so um, if you have questions about tonight's segment, uh, after you've had a chance to look at the recipes, feel free to send them to askachef at wellseasoned.ca. He'll ignore them, but I will answer them. Um, so feel free to. <laughs> Unless you tip, then I might just say that. No yes. tipping. No tipping. Um, so thank you for joining us tonight. If you have suggestions for future episodes, we'd love to hear from you. We do have um, a halibut episode coming up, and we've got an, uh, spot prawns are coming soon. Yum. So I really want to focus on sort of some really hyper-local ingredients. And so you better get your little uh, fishing rod and go get, uh, get us some spot prawns. <laughs> you can fish for spot prawns? That would be, like, so cumbersome, if like you, a little if, tiny if, rod. If you had enough mayor, <laughs> you, I'm, I'm pretty sure you can. <laughs> you need a lot of Chardonnay, one prawn at a time. Just reel it in. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god what a picture that is in my head <laughs> anyhow thanks chef thanks for joining us tonight thanks for sharing our crab extravaganza nice. thanks jenna and david and melanie for joining us we'll see you here next thursday at 5 30. cheers